Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning into the broadcast today. Last week, we preached a part one sermon entitled, What You Do in Life Echoes into Eternity. This is part two. So get your pencil and paper out. Get your notes ready because you're going to learn some more. Do you realize that you weren't created for just one generation? You weren't created for just one. You've been created for something so wonderful that it will carry on forever. You're an eternal being. Time means nothing to you because you're born Christ in you, the hope of glory. So let's go into part two of this wonderful sermon entitled, What You Do in Life Echoes into Eternity. Watch. Let me show you something that God does. Write it down. God never shows us how much it will cost to obey him. Write it down. God will never show you how much it will cost to obey him because you can't pay it. It's already paid. You do your work by obedience to simply obey. If God would have told me in the beginning of my ministry, my television bill every month, I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't have done it. I just can't do that. If he'd have told me the amount of employees and what I have to spend every month, plus uh, benefits and all this stuff. Mm -mm. All he told me was to go ye. I didn't even know where ye was. <laughs> I said, I don't know where that's at. He said, good. Then you'll always keep your eyes on me and you'll never falter or fail. See, he never tells you what it would cost you to obey him. Abraham did not know that. And the first cost was to leave his family. Leave your mother and father. That ain't an easy thing to do unless you don't like them. <laughs> you know, I don't know about that. You see, he said, well, well, how do I know when I get there? You know. You see, I never forget the time when Brother Copeland had the Eagle Mountain Motorcycle Rally. Me and Jerry Savelle was standing on the last one. Let me just say that. The last one we had did here, here at the uh, ministry. And we were standing behind the platform. There was enough equipment. God, probably feel this thing. Maybe more than this. I mean, just equipment everywhere. And Jerry leaned over to me. He said, well, you know, when I first went to work for Kenneth, you could put everything he owned in the back of a station wagon. I said, that include glory? <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah. I said, look at this. Just to produce this meeting. The television equipment, the lights, the stage, the sound, all the stuff. But you see, if he, if he told you, you need this, you need that, he'd go, huh, that's impossible. That's why he doesn't say it. So you have to grow into it like a child that grows in it. And I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that time. And all those people getting saved. I'll never forget Matt Gober. He was such a blessing. I was preaching a sermon. And some guy come up there. And you know, people that came to those kind of meetings, they didn't look saved. They didn't smell saved. <laughs> this one guy come up there. And I'm about ready to speak. And he, he, he just, he said, I love you, Brother Jesse. He just, and I heard him say, I enjoy it. I enjoy him. And he reached in his pocket and started rolling a joint. <laughs> and I went, Mac, he's rolling a joint. He said, he what? He, so Matt come on and said, you can't do it. He said, every time I feel this good, I get high. <laughs> but Matt didn't hurt him. Matt didn't beat him. Or, you know, just, he said, let me give you something that's better than that. You listen, you're going to get the most high. And, he, you know, that typical 60s and 70s draw. Wow, man. <laughs> it was a great time. And yet great ministers came out of those motorcycle meetings that the world would never choose. See, God loves everybody on this, on this planet, whether you do or don't. And God said, I'll send these and send those. Because you're so precious to him. See, what you do in life, it echoes into eternity. Write this down. To excel, you must be ready for unexpected calls and new responsibilities. To excel or to echo, you must be ready for unexpected calls and new responsibilities. 
It always happens in anything you do. When is the ministry too big? It never is. I honestly believe if we had everybody saved on the planet, some aliens would show up the next day. <laughs> and we'd have to go evangelize somewhere. You got to be ready for unexpected calls and new responsibilities. Yes, this is the excel, see, to do what God wants you to do. There's been times I didn't want to do what God wanted. I was tired. I said it the other day when I was finishing up my year. I was coming home on that plane. I mean, I rode hard and put up wet. And the Lord said, I know you want to take some time off, but I'm going to have people come to your house and your office every day, and I want you to tell them about I said, Jesus, they'll probably go to hell anyway. So what's the use? <laughs> I ain't going to lie. But you say stupid things when you're tired. I said, but okay, I'll, I'll talk. And I, I, on my time off, I had one of the most exciting times reaching people, changing lives one soul at a time. I'd go to my favorite restaurant or something like that, and somebody said, I watch you on television. I had a Jewish man, a Jewish rabbi. He said, you are very interesting. Now, I am not a Christian, but I watch you faithfully every Sunday. I said, well, don't you know Jesus is Jewish? He goes, you are very interesting. <laughs> I said, well, let's talk about the God you serve. I'll get Jesus in there. <laughs> Wasn't criticizing a man. We had a wonderful conversation. I find people sometimes lean over in a restaurant like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I say, y'all lost and going to hell too? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, come on over here. <laughs> if we, you, know, <laughs> you get a whole bunch of people around the table. And, and the restaurant people get mad unless you tip them. So I take out a little money. I said, come here. I said, we're going to use this for a while. How much you make an hour? Yeah. Well, here's five times that. Oh, stay as long as you want, Reverend. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Hey, it's worth it to me to get somebody born again. Glory. See, that was an unexpected call. I wasn't expecting that. It was a new responsibility. You must accept Christ's commission and set sail upon an unknown sea or ocean with sealed orders. How many of you have been in the military? Hold your hand up. How many of you got orders? You got them orders, you did what them orders say. Sometimes they would put you out there and you didn't open them orders until you were out to sea. You see, let me say it again. You must accept Christ's commission and set sail upon an unknown ocean with sealed orders. Yeah, but what's in the envelope? Don't make no difference. Your primary concern right now is to obey. And when we open up, those orders are sealed. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Because see, it's above your big grade to change it. You got to get another star and another star and another star before something's changed. That's sealed. Order. See, my orders are sealed. To go in the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature. Yeah, but how much money is it going to take? It has nothing to do with me. My orders are sealed. Well, how do you know where to go? It makes no difference. Go. And when I open up the envelope, I'll find out what to do, when to do, where to do it, and how to do it. Why? Because I'm obeying orders. I'm under command. And then I go to a place where I do command. You follow my point? So that my life or your life would echo into eternity. I saw an old movie the other day I really love about this wonderful man named Peter Marshall. I don't know if you ever heard of Peter Marshall. He uh, pastored the great church there in Washington, D.C. Almost fell off a cliff when he found his calling to go preach the gospel. It, it was an amazing thing, and he, got, he had the honor of... I saw the gift of the Spirit in operation. I, I don't think Hollywood understood what was going on, but they played it out. That when he went before West Point, he changed his sermon, and, and he said, I had to do this, and... Certainly then no more than an hour later, you know, we found out that Japan had bombed Pearl Harbor and had to turn people around and go. And I thought, look at there, God. Hollywood don't even realize that the gift of the Spirit was an operation in that man as he ministered. But you see, his words echoed into my life. Because he went, you see, I never met Peter Marshall personally. I wasn't born then. But you know what? I met him in his message. I met him in his echo. I have a series of books. It's an old series. I just like, I, I don't really study them. I just read them a lot. 20 centuries of great preaching. Anybody got that in your library? 
20th century. You ought to get it. I mean, it, I mean some of the greatest men, Billy Graham's, and they, they, go from, they go from all the way back. I have a very extensive library. And when I want to feel Jewish, I pull out the Talmud and the Mishnah, and I read from right to left, which is not easy. I, had to, I, have, I have to teach myself where to go and so I can understand. The other day I stood in my library and I said, all oh, this knowledge, this is what Paul the Apostle had. This is what he knew, not believed, he knew this. And he threw it away to preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. But then he picked it back up when he spoke to the Jew so he could minister along their line of thinking. And what I mean by throw away, no, he didn't discard it, but he realized he understood through faith the inner workings of it instead of just to live by faith or by law. Are y'all enjoying this? Yeah. See, you must accept Christ's commission and set sail upon an unknown ocean with sealed orders. I was so excited when Jeremy preached his first minister's conference a couple, two or three years ago. I said, oh, Jesus. I can hear the unloosening the ropes. He going to sea. He got sealed orders. Here we go. And then the next time, next thing I hear, he's in his own ministry. And it was, it's wonderful to see that. It's a blessing of God to see it. And I thought, man. Now, you know, some people get intimidated. I've never been intimidated by nobody. And I don't mean that private, because I wish I could preach like Kenneth Copeland, but I can't. Or teach, I can't. So I don't. I wish I could be Gloria, but I'm too ugly. <laughs> I'll never get there. You know what I'm saying? So I don't try. And I appreciate Jeremy taking care of me a while ago. Some lady kissed me on the cheek. Jeremy, he goes, a lipstick on your face there, bro. Jesse, okay, I got to go home. I got to explain that. <laughs> Without a ring. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Cope. I appreciate that. <laughs> so I accepted Christ's commission. And my orders are sealed. When are you going to retire? Abraham didn't do his best till he's 100. That's not in my vocabulary. Would you like to slow down? Yes. But that's not my privilege neither. That's above my pay grade to understand that. My orders are sealed. You see, I fell in love with the word of faith. Not that I don't like the Baptists. I preach Baptist conventions. Can you believe it? They asked me. They said, please don't say nothing about tongues. I said, okay. But it'll probably come out when I least expect it. I, I don't know. I just want to warn you. But I'll do my best. When the Catholic Church asked me, oh, that's wonderful. We're going to do the mass, then would you do the homily? Oh, yes. See, the Archdiocese of Roman Catholic Church. And because as far as they're concerned, I'm Catholic. I mean, I'm in the records. I'm christened and confirmed. They didn't throw me out. And I love to walk up those little pew things. I mean, the little pulpit things. They're not like this. Protestants got stuff. No, no, you walk up. This is, this is artwork, man. And you close the door behind you and you're on the side. Stand for the reading of the word. You can't kick because you knock the thing. It's small up there, you know. But it was such an honor to be asked. Yes, it is. Orders are sealed. I want my life to echo into eternity. Not so people can remember who I am, but remember what I say. Because what I said is what God said. You follow what I'm saying. Write this down. Faith is always an, an adventure. Why? It produces courage of the soul to face the unknown. Faith is always an adventure. It produces courage of the soul to face the unknown. There's a lot of things I don't know. And, I, and encouragement is the oxygen of the soul, so I breathe. I encourage myself. And it gives me that courage to face the unknown. You see what I'm saying? Because it's an adventure. That doesn't mean the devil don't fight. That doesn't mean we hadn't had hard times. Uh, someone told me a while ago, said, how do you get it into here? You want me to give you a little secret? Let me show you something. There's one thing Satan is good about. He's good about time. He knows he doesn't have much. 
You understand what I'm saying? So he knows he, that everything he does has to count because he is awaiting confinement. See, he's been already sentenced. He's going, he's going into the pit. He knows that. Now, he, he can't, he's not a faith devil, he's a flesh devil. So he can't receive anything by faith. What I'm preaching today, he don't even understand. He's lost that. He's pure intellectual. He's pure flesh. So he watches you. And whatever bothers you is what he uses to hinder you. Now, if you believe in God for something, and you keep talking about it constantly, and I'm like, you, bring, you, you bring it to God, don't misunderstand me, but you go, boy, I hadn't seen it yet. I hadn't seen it yet. But you wait, I hadn't seen it yet. He goes, well, what we're doing is working. But if you know in whom you have believed, and you persuaded, and committed, go read the scripture, if you just don't pay attention to it, he'll go, why aren't they, why aren't they talking about that? That they hadn't got it yet. They hadn't got it yet. I just don't say nothing. I just, you see, he goes, where is he looking? And he'll back off the hindrance and your tsunami of blessing will come flying in. Do you follow what I'm saying? But if you're paying attention, because you hadn't seen it yet, where, where, where he goes, well, everything, what we're doing is working. So let's just put a double, uh, you know, let's do a blitz on this thing. But if you turn your head and start looking at everything, I promise you he's going to do this. Where, what is he looking at? What, where, where is he going? Because that's where we want to hinder him. And there's been times I've told Kathy, something. she said, you know, Jess, and I went. She goes, oh, yeah. And all of a sudden we, we drew Satan and his cohorts attention away from what we really want. And the tsunami came in, boom, not of destruction, but of blessing. Remember that. And your prayers will get answered a lot quicker because he'll back off. I asked the Lord one time, I said, you know, things have been going pretty good. I said, you know, we ain't had too much trouble. What's the matter? The devil took a vacation? Oh, you're just putting extra angels around me to protect me? He said, no, he's putting out fires. I said, well, what'd you say? He said, he's putting out fires, Jesse. He ain't got time to mess with you or the body of Christ. I said, what? He said, he sowed rebellion in heaven. He's got rebellion in his own works. He's reaping what he sowed. He's got big angel, angel said, he been lying to us, lying to us. We ain't getting this. I'm taking over. So he got to go beat their brains out. He's got to put them back under submission. All of a sudden, everything's going good, money flowing, everything flowing. And once he gets them back under submission, he's going to come back at you. He sold rebellion. He's got rebellion in his camp. He has disorder in his camp. See, that's why I refuse to be double-minded. It's a form of, of, of spiritual disorder. You would never put money in a machine that says out of order, would you? Because you'd be stupid if you did. That's a big sign, out of order. Well, let's see if we can get a Coke. But it says out of order. I know what it said. See, double-minded is a form of spiritual disorder. So don't put your nickels in something that's out of order. You follow what I'm saying? This is so you can excel, so you, your life will echo into eternity. So I've learned how. I don't mean it's private. I've learned how to take his gaze off of what I'm looking at. And I'll... Anybody watch football? You ever notice Drew Brees? They don't know where he's going. He backs off. He's doing this. He's, t he's talking to the secondary. He's throwing here. So they start running this way, and he fires here. You see my point? The same thing with all these other, the real good quarterbacks, the Tom Brady's and, and the Drew Brees's and the Aaron Rodgers and, and Eli and the Mannings, both of them. You see, because you don't, if you're gazing where you're going, your enemy's going to be there when you throw. But if you can make your enemy think you're going over here, but you're really going here, you're going to have a touchdown. It's very simple. It really is. Some of you have been struggling to make your church grow because that's all you do is talk about it. You can say it one time, this church is growing, and just start doing other stuff. And before you know it, the devil says, this ain't working. You know what? We don't have much time left. We've got to find something. Let's go see what he's doing. Let's try to attack him over here. When really what you want is here, comes, it just comes flowing in. I can't say that enough. I keep repeating it. But I, I mean that. that. That's what I mean by faith is an adventure. 
adventure. It produces courage of the soul to face the unknown. Write this down. Life loses its depth and fragrance without inspiration in it. Life loses its depth and its fragrance without inspiration in it. That's so true, ladies and gentlemen. An uninspired life has no lasting value. That's a fact. God wants us to live a life full of inspiration, one that has depth and fragrance. Now, I love getting around people of, of faith while wow, they have an aroma of God on them because that's how you please God. You've been in his presence when you use faith. Listen, in order to do something that echoes into eternity, we must also be ready for unexpected calls and responsibilities. I mean, God talked to Abraham and told him, just leave your house, take your family and get out, but didn't tell him where he was going. But you know what? He did it. He actually did it. Think about that for a minute. Could you do that? You see, I tell people, if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to know when you get there. But he didn't know where he was going, but, but my God, but because he trusted God and walked by faith, he found out this is where he was supposed to be. My Lord. It's such a blessing to live by faith because it takes your life past your physical life. See, let me tell you something about life. Life's a journey. And people think when someone passes away, that's the end of the journey. No, you got another journey. You're going into eternity forever. Not too long ago, I preached a funeral and everybody was talking about, well, he passed away. I said, no, he hadn't passed. He's arrived. I don't want people to say everybody's passed away, especially if you're born again. No, you have arrived. Think about that. They're not going to just, uh, no, no, they're going into eternity with a lot of great things to do because God is still creating even as we speak. Ooh, so stay around God. You'll get that smell on you, that aroma of faith, and it will draw people to you. I'm starting to preach here. I can't help myself. Stay right there. I'll be back in just a moment. We'll show you some wonderful things going on at Jesse the Planets Ministries, and I'll be back in just a moment to speak another wonderful word to you. So watch this. Are you ready to believe the unbelievable, receive the impossible because it's doable? In my new book, Believe, you will be challenged to believe the uncompromised Word of God so that you can receive all that God has for your life. Yes, it's time to unlock your faith in God's promises and believe the truth of the gospel. For your donation of $5 or more, you can receive your physical copy or digital download of Believe at JDM.org. It's time to make your faith work. Yes. Order your copy today and remember to believe this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come I hope you get our February product off of my book for By Faith. It's a wonderful book. I'm going to tell you something. I'm not just saying it because I wrote it because it'll give you a revelation. You know, faith is the greatest element God has ever given to man. Why? What does it do? Number one, it makes you think. Number two, it, you, it makes you imagine. And number three, three, it makes you dream. Think, imagine, and dream. Like I said last week, this book will build up your faith so your life echoes into eternity. Go to jdm.org to get all the ordering information. It will bless you. And I'm telling you, you'll learn something powerful as you walk through this journey of life. Partners, thank you once again for your faithful financial support to this ministry. We couldn't do it without you. It just can't. Why? Because you know what? People say, why do, you, why do you ministers ask for money? Well, we don't have commercials on television to pay for all this. Like the, like, like the uh, media does. and all that. No, we don't have that, see? We just totally trust God, and we thank you that you are partnered to this ministry. Nothing too small and nothing too big. I've asked the Lord, and you've heard me say it many times, for every dollar given to this ministry, or euro, or franc, or I don't know, whatever you use for your money, I want a soul into the kingdom. I will not be lazy with your seed. 
People say, man, that man got some energy for as old as he is. But at the time you see in this, I'm 74, and like my granddaughter says, and a half. <laughs> I said, okay, 74 and a half. I don't care. Even my own staff said, boss, we cannot stay up with you. I don't have time to get tired, sick, depressed, discouraged. Why? Because you send me to preach the gospel with your faithful financial partnership. Now, you think about that for a minute. I am sure this is not about money. This is about reaching people, changing lives, one soul at a time. So would you do something to please God today and support this ministry? This ministry is pure. It's clean. If we do anything wrong, we don't know anything about it. Anything we don't know about, we get experts to help us and show us what to do, like taxes and things of that nature. Thank you for watching today. Now, next week, something wonderful is going to happen. Kathy, my wife, will have a very special, powerful message just for you. See you next week. Bye-bye. We're positioned for the greatest revival this world has ever known. We are looking forward to the great return of our Lord Jesus Christ, and He's going to need every one of us to be enlisted in on the front lines of doing what we're called to do. This promise of Jesus is available to whosoever for whatsoever. It's for you. Keep moving higher and farther and give God the glory. Glorious, a conference for women, Friday, March 8th and Saturday, March 9th. You're going to love this month's partner offer. Abiding is better than visiting. You know, in order to succeed in all we do, we must live a branch life. He's the vine, you're the branches. Jesus tells us, abide in me and I in it, you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. How do I get it? Go to jdm.org. That's our website for all that information, and you'll be blessed. Do it now. Did you know angels are real and many of them are here today? God's Word is full of supernatural experiences by people just like you and me. Order your copy today at jdm.org. Do you realize that God wants you to thrive, prosper, and achieve everything He's called you to do? Well, in my book, Suited for Success, I'm going to show you how to be fully equipped with all the essentials that you need to live a victorious and prosperous life. Your victory has already been settled. You can and will accomplish every dream God put in your heart. Suited for Success. Order your copy at JDM.org today. During these latter days, those that serve the Lord are going to walk in a level of joy and strength and peace that's beyond understanding. It could be chaos all around you, but God is going to impart His supernatural bold power to help you to be strong for yourself, but also for your family and for your maybe your business.